This might sound like a weird show, but I wanted to go over the fact that the Dark Ages have not only done an incredible amount of damage to chronology, mainstream chronology, or even like alternative chronologies, but the existence of the Dark Age has absolutely affected society on a psychological level. Now, why am I even talking about this? Why does this matter? Like, what's the big deal? So, well, what's the big deal, right? If we add a thousand years to our history that never happened, like that's huge. That alone really should have been an incredible wake up call to pretty much every single historian on the planet. The very second anybody saw that 1000 years of human inaction had been added to the historical timeline, everybody should have dogpiled on that and tried to figure out, is this really true? Is it, is it really real that humans did nothing for a thousand years? Just that basic question alone should have had every single psychologist, anthropologist, and really every historian as well running over, looking at the Dark Ages, and immediately calling out the BS that it is. But that didn't happen, did it? Or at least it's not happening now. One of the things that it is important to remember is that when the Dark Ages were introduced back during the Renaissance period, during the Joseph Scalinger time, you know, all that garbage forgery time. When the Dark Ages show up as a concept, not everybody jumped onto it. Back then, there was absolutely pushback against all of this stuff. People did not just immediately say, oh yeah, cool, you, the Dark Ages? Oh yeah, I never even thought about that. You found this? Oh yeah, let me just put it into my history now. Oh look, it all makes sense, now we can start teaching it. That's not how it went down back then. There was a lot of pushback back then. And that's actually something really important to remember, is that the Dark Ages were not immediately added to the historical zeitgeist. Now, this is actually interesting in and of its own right. The fact that people back then, just from looking at this problem that we have, the fact that anybody could even push something like the Dark Ages into the zeitgeist and that anybody would take it seriously is an extremely interesting point of view. Because right off the bat, what this tells us about the people back during the Renaissance period, right? You know, the 14th, 15th century-ish area where all of this stuff starts to come out of. What it tells us right then and there is that even the historians back during this period of time were having a hard time reconciling their more recent history just a few hundred years before they existed. It's crazy if you think about it. So that means that these people did not have a grasp on the history that they were technically closer to than we are today. Now that is a freaking amazing concept that, I mean, and it's real, it exists. The fact that something like the Dark Ages was allowed to be put into the historical zeitgeist shows us that back then, people did not know enough about their own history, just in their general areas, to say, no, the, the Dark Ages, what are you talking about, dude? You can't just create Dark Ages. We know what happened here, right? We're, it's only a few hundred years ago. You know, my parents told me stories, or there's books, or, or whatever, right? But that's not the case. That is not what we find. So a lot of the stuff that the Dark Ages is based on is, well, to be quite blunt, a lot of Renaissance forgeries. Because remember, back during, the re back during the Renaissance time, can't even speak, back during the Renaissance time, there was a huge call for all kinds of forgeries from not only paintings, but from books, documents, etc. And we've kind of covered some of this, but these forgeries were then used for all kinds of power grabs. It's, it's not interesting or anything like that in the sense of human greed and human ingenuity to, you know, go out and grab power. There's nothing crazy about that. But the fact that they were able to do it during this period of time, all of a sudden, and then throw in this concept of the Dark Ages and eventually get away with it? I mean, that, that is some seriously weird stuff. And, and the reality is, it does not line up with what we should have expected 
those people to be doing as historians. All right, I may have rambled a little bit there, but let me, so let me bring it back together. So basically what we see just by the simple fact that the Dark Ages were allowed to exist in any capacity, even if people were against it, and of course there were a lot of people against it, this was not a unanimously agreed upon thing that popped up. You know, everybody was not like, oh hey, oh the Dark Ages? Oh yeah, dude, yeah, throw it in there. Yeah, excellent, you know, hug each other, slap it, you know, whatever. They weren't, that's not how it went, dude. They did not party and all agree that this was the missing link. That, oh yeah, hey, what a surprise. You know, for whatever reason, we had no clue about our history only, you know, three or four hundred years ago for some weird reason. But yeah, the Dark Ages, yeah, this makes sense. The people right before us, they did nothing. I mean, they just, they just stood around. They just stared at the wall. They just ate dirt, right? They just, they just walked around and bumped into things and nothing happened for a thousand years. Yes, give Scalinger the awards. Yes, excellent. Put this into the zeitgeist. Yes, we have figured out history like that is not how it went at least thank thank goodness that's not how it went that's how it's treated now but that's not how it went right so, so basically it's important to remember that there was pushback even back then and as there should have been right i mean how could just imagine this dude some dude coming up to you right now and saying oh yeah from the year i don't know from the year 1900 back to 1600 nobody did anything uh, yeah, it's just dark, bro. Nothing happened. Nobody did anything. You, just chill. You know, it's, a, it's another dark age. Nothing happened. You would look at that person and you would be forced to slap them, right? You'd just be like, ah! 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 And you'd just have no choice, dude, but to just slap them around. You'd be like, dude, you're crazy. You are insane. What are you talking about? How can you make a claim that only, you know, the past 400 years suddenly didn't exist and nobody did anything, right? We don't accept that now. There's no historian, even if you're in the mainstream, it's like the crazy person mainstream history, you would not agree with that. You would, you would think that the people are crazy. But this is what the principle of the Dark Ages basically are, right? So in the 14th and 15th century, when, you know, Scalinger and all those guys start to create this stuff and start to create the new mainstream historical narrative, there are people back then who are like, no, dude, you're, you're insane. We're not adding a thousand years to what didn't exist. Why, why are you even doing this, right? And so initially, at least, the Dark Ages were not taken seriously by the academics more or less back then. But, but this is where things get a little weird. Now, I can't say it's like 100% people were against it, obviously. In fact, I would be curious to know how much of the society back then was truly against it. Uh, at least systemically. By that I mean any, any system of authority. Because anybody in a system of authority, in a position in that system of authority, would have something to possibly gain from supporting the Dark Age concept. Right, and this is probably, or not probably, this is exactly why it was able to be ingrained eventually over time into the mainstream historical zeitgeist. So what happens is, is the Dark Age is not just made up for fun, right? They don't just say, oh yeah, a thousand years of nothing, our ancestors were back to being cave people after building all of these amazing structures, after doing all of this amazing astronomy, after having these unbelievably complex civilizations, suddenly they all stop for a thousand years, and then they restart it exactly, you know, where it left off. And that's, that's actually literally what the dark, say, dark Ages are. Like, they literally say that society pauses. It's not like society rebuilds itself, by the way. Society stops at a certain point, and then a thousand-ish, you know, 900 to a thousand. I say a thousand. It could be, you know, we don't know the perfect number. 900 to a thousand years later, it just reignites exactly where it left off. All right, now we'll get into that in, in a different show and we'll have science to prove all of that. But that's the concept of the Dark Ages. And I realize that I am rambling. So basically the Dark Ages gets ingrained into mainstream chronology because of a very simple psychological reason. Greed, right? Power corrupts absolutely. And the Dark Ages offered people in already authoritative positions or people who wanted to gain authoritative positions, it offered them a way to do it, right? All you had to do was get a forged document, a forged manual book, whatever, maybe a forged painting, you know, whatever you could get that was forged, that was your proof to a claim towards something, 
and suddenly you you know you had a better chance of getting it. you had an opportunity to get that power that you didn't have before now if you're rolling your eyes right now and you're saying well no kidding dude i understand that people want power but think about what i just said this is a serious statement that we have just pointed out that there is a 1000 year period that has been added to the mainstream chronology zeitgeist that is being used to gain power and control. And the majority of the population buys into it. That is a serious problem. The Dark Ages are not just something that simply exists within a timeline, whether it's real or not, and you can just skim over it and ignore it or deal with it or whatever and it doesn't matter. No, the fact that something like the Dark Ages exists in our timeline and has been exploited for like, what, five, six centuries now by people who have been able to exploit it? That's a serious problem. And what that does is that destroys and absolutely corrupts any kind of historical research that you are hoping to do. Now, if you're like, if you're saying, well, I accidentally stumbled on this stupid talk and I don't really care about the Dark Ages and anything that happened before it, you know, that's not really my, my timeline. I'm more interested in the timelines of like, I don't know, World War II or American Civil War or whatever. If you think that these areas of research are untouched by the concept of the Dark Ages, think again. Absolutely think again, because situations like, uh, let's just pick like one of the world wars, or if you can argue that they're all one world war, whatever. But the world wars, for example, are absolutely directly descended from power grabs designed, built, and stolen from the concept of the Dark Ages. All right. So if you're studying, you know, the politics of a world war and you're not factoring in the true histories of the families, of the companies, of the of the people in general who got all of those gears rolling, you do not have a real fundamental picture of that war. Your understanding will always be flawed. All right. So if your your areas of studies are, are past the time of the Dark Ages, it's still important for you to understand that the Dark Ages never happened. In fact, it's really important for you if you love the military machine aspect, right? The war part, you know, all the inventions and the, and the combat and all of that stuff. And I'll explain why in just a little bit. And then, of course, what really matters, well, it's not really, it's not like one is better than the other. But if you're studying ancient history and all of your dates essentially have a Dark Age attached to them, i.e., no matter what date you're studying, if the Dark Ages never happened, that means you're adding a false 1,000 years to any date you believe in. And it doesn't matter really what date you believe in. If you are always using mainstream chronology, mainstream chronology always factors in the 900 to 1,000 years of the Dark Age. So what does that do for your dates, right? So if you want to say, you know, the Egyptians existed or built the pyramids 5,000 years ago or whatever, all right, so that, you know, 5,000, but you have one extra thousand in there now that didn't exist. So if you go off the mainstream chronology of, say, the pyramids, 5,000 years now has to become 4,000 years. Now, the further back in time you go, you might say, well, does that really matter? Of course it matters. It absolutely matters. I get that we're playing with thousands of years, but that is the problem. It's a thousand years. You know how much stuff humans can do in a thousand years? Look out your window, right? Look around. See how much stuff humans have done just in your lifetime. It literally is irrelevant how old you are. Look around. Humans do not stop and do nothing for 1,000 years. So we now have a thousand years claimed, claimed by mainstream historians that humans did nothing. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely insane. Now, what are the ramifications for that? What, I mean, if th this claim is absolutely crazy. What else is going on? Why, what else, what other problems do we have here? Let's outline some of these problems. Let's have some fun. All right, so if you're, let's stick with the ancient researchers. Let's, let's stick here for a second. So if, if, if we take out the Dark Ages, if we have to say that, that the period between, you know, 300-ish, 400-ish AD to 1300-ish AD never existed, 
And by the way, before I go on, I'm, I'm giving rough dates for the Dark Ages because even in mainstream academia, you can have all kinds of arguments about, you know, what dates are really accurate for the Dark Ages. And this is one of the problems. I mean, this is, this is an issue also for alternative researchers who are trying to pin down dates. It gets even worse that when we start dealing with the fact that our calendar has not been 365 days and change as long as we think it has, you know, dating gets really, really weird. And also don't forget the dating methods that people used before the Gregorian calendar showed up. And this is where the West, you know, would have really started to, to lock in dates. You know, people had different ways of calculating time, and we don't even have a lot of evidence surviving anyways of what people did, say, you know, back 200 AD, right? We don't have all of their, we don't have enough information to meticulously 100% say what people were doing. We have time counting or time keeping pieces from various periods of these eras, but there's also a lot of problems with those. So whenever I give a date like this, especially when it comes to real chronology, man, years get fuzzy. So I'm just giving very general, broad dates. I'm not trying to, I'm not making a hard statement or claim about a certain date because the reality is we do not know. All right, so I'm just, I, you know what? I'm not even gonna, when, okay, I'll give dates, but like I said, I'm not saying these are hard locked in. When you start to study real chronology, and if you're looking at the Dark Ages, you're well on your way. Once you get into the like real chronology, once you start to see what existed and what probably didn't exist, all the dates change. I mean, everything completely gets thrown out the window and your entire historical world is thrown in the trash, thrown in the truck, spun around, garbaged up, <laughs> and then spit back out and then you have to figure it all out again because yeah okay anyway so here's the ramifications for there being an extra thousand years in our date so if we remove the dark ages a couple of things have to happen the very first thing that is going to happen is it's going to affect anybody who ever made a claim to land power positions crowns whatever from dark age level documents that immediately invalidates their claims. Now that is about 12 shows on its own for hours and hours and hours, but think about that concept. If you can disprove a claim on some sort of power structure that exists today, that has a foundation built on dark age documents or Renaissance documents, what happens? See, suddenly those people that everybody you know is forced to worship suddenly they just become charlatans, right? And, and pretty much everybody already knows that, especially nowadays, that, you know, all of the politicians, all of the rulers, you know, all the kings, queens, whatever you've got, emperors, you know, whatever leadership you have nowadays, nobody looks at these people and thinks, wow, that's a good person. They got there by working hard, caring for people, you know, caring for me, building, but nobody got there like that, right? A lot of people got where they are now because of stuff like creating fake garbage like the dark ages so right there that completely changes every aspect of history right there done doesn't matter what you're studying especially if it's after the dark ages everything you thought you knew is trash all right that destroys an entire foundation that mainstream researchers have been building their entire careers off of right so check this out right here just taking away the dark ages what we have done is we have literally challenged almost every single power structure on earth right now and that not that doesn't just range from politicians and kings that range from them all the way over to academia right and everything in between so if anything is built on this foundation and there's and, and there's tons of stuff built on this foundation right there's probably there not probably there are things built on this fraudulent foundation that you probably don't even realize are built on that foundation right now I'm, I'm babbling already so that's a different show as well but here's the problem if the dark ages don't exist suddenly a lot of people lose their jobs lose their ego lose their crowns lose their position do you really believe that these people are interested in losing their positions of course not absolutely not so if you ever wonder like why why could something like the dark ages if it's not real if it's a lie 
Why would all of these high level, otherwise intelligent people continue to support it? And that's it. It is simple human psychology, power and greed. That is it. You do not need some sort of crazy, huge conspiracy. You don't need anything. All you need is literal, basic human greed. That's it. You're done. That's all you need. And if you can build empires off of these little documents or these little forgeries, then people will do it. And you're out of your mind if you think people won't do it. If you think there are people out there who will not sit there and, and be scumbags like this and, and forge documents and build stuff up off of imaginary histories, you are mentally ill. Seek help immediately. All right, of course people are going to exploit this. And the Dark Ages has become something that was absolutely exploited. Now that, I, I'm not even going to go further on this psychology. Because that's it. You don't need anything crazy. We do not have to do a deep dive into the human mind to dredge out why somebody would try to use a forgery to gain power. You all know exactly why people do this. All right, if you're a human... You understand it. Hell, you've probably done it yourself, right? And you shouldn't. You should stop that. Be a good person. Don't do that. All right, so that's like one of the main ramifications of, of the Dark Ages existing right there. Our entire society has been poisoned by it. Our entire lifestyles have been absolutely driven by these lies. Now, all right, that's enough of that. Well, that's enough schizo babble on that front. Okay, so what else does it do? Let, let's have some fun here. So if we say that, you know, the Dark Ages existed, you know, three or 400 AD-ish, whatever, you know, like I said, the years are fuzzy, to, you know, 13, 1400-ish, whatever, you know, like I said, years are fuzzy. I'm going to say it again, years are fuzzy. It's important to know that I do not know the exact years, nor does anybody else, right? If you take away anything from this, at least take that away from this, right? People who say they know for a fact the exact timeline of something that happened in ancient history, once again, you can start choking them out. Don't even listen to them, dude. Just, just walk away. I mean, it's not worth your time, right? Anyway, so here's another ramification. This is just another example. So if we get rid of that thousand years, now what happens? Okay, so right now the mainstream says Rome fell around the late 400s AD, right? So 470s, whatever, somewhere around there is where the mainstream says that Rome was done. They, were, they fell, they were finished. That's where it ended, okay. And that kind of kicks off the Dark Ages, right? There's a whole school that says that is what kicks off the Dark Ages, which is fine. Great, whatever. So if we now have Rome falling in 476, we now cut out a thousand years. That means that Mr. Christopher Columbus sailed not in 1492, but in 492. How do you like that? All of a sudden, there is no longer a gap between Rome and Christopher Columbus. Now, I just chose a random thing to point out. This is just a random example, but it's a heavy example. If we get rid of a thousand years, all of a sudden, Christopher Columbus and Rome, as we think about Rome, were synonymous. They coexisted right there. Now, if that sounds crazy, I understand. Because one of the other problems with the Dark Ages, or I should say, one of the problems with psychology that the Dark Ages highlights is your own indoctrination. It highlights your own psychological conditioning that you have been put through over the course of your life. Now, once again, I stress this is only on the Western side of things, the Western world. I'm not commenting about other cultures or other peoples or anything because I don't live there. I, don't, I didn't get that upbringing. But if you are brought up in the Western public school system, these are the things that you believe, right? 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Nah, -uh. 492, Columbus sailed. Now, that date actually isn't wrong. There's no real reason to believe that that date is, is, is at least not 100% correct. I'm not saying it's dead dead on, but there's also no reason to think it, it didn't exist like that. So I'll use four, 492. But that means Christopher Columbus and the Romans could have been hanging out. I say could have, but they were. The reality is, if we follow the science, we get rid of a thousand years suddenly Christopher Columbus is there at the tail end of the Roman Empire as we know it falling. Now there's way more going on than just that, but 
that should be enough of a shock value for you to either hit that dislike button and unsubscribe or you now feel like I'm insane and that's fine but stick with me the rest of this series will start to prove that stuff but here before we even get to all that let's just keep going with this Columbus thing so if we look at maps and documents and books and stuff like that that would that would date to 1492 or now in our case 492 what we should expect to find because these things were created before the Dark Ages were a thing, right? Nobody was factoring in Dark Ages yet, like when Columbus existed. He didn't care about any of that. We should find dates that reflect a time before the Dark Ages. And guess what we find? We absolutely find all of these dates. If you guys have seen old maps or old documents, and they have, like it'll say 1492, but that, that one where it says 1492, but the one doesn't really look like a one. It looks like a J or an I, right? It's, and, and there's tons of research on this, and ultimately it's not a one. It's a four. It's an I or a J, and then it's 492. Right now, this has been proven all over the place, and it is a huge point of contention. I get that, and the debate is still going on. But there's no reason to believe that that 1492 is a 14. It says I or J for 92. Even back then, they were already writing the dates correctly in line with real history. Once the Dark Ages show up, then all of a sudden those I's or those J's that prefix that date suddenly become one. And of course, you know, the mainstream likes to say, oh, they were just dumb when they wrote one. You know, it's just a fudging, it's just, you know, an extra mark or whatever. And it's not really an I, it's a one. You know, the, the pen bled into the, the parchment or, or whatever. The amount of cope that the mainstream has for that I and J in front of a date is, is absolutely hilarious. Every time you hear somebody talk about that, you just like, just watching them trying to like, oh, uh, 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 uh. You, know, you just turn it off. You just be, all right, I'm moving on. You're dumb. Because that's all it is. It's obviously an I or a J. To make matters even worse, they even say it back then, right? The I or the J meant, you know, Isus or Jesus, right? That was the time of Isus or Jesus. That is what that meant. And that's what they say. It's right there. These are scientific facts. So we now have Christopher Columbus and Romans hanging out. That also means that we are not living in the year 2023, or if this channel is still up whenever you're listening to it in a few years from now, I'm sure it's been deleted by then. But that means we live in the year 1023. Suddenly, we are now only 600-ish years from the Roman Empire. How do you like that? We are only 600 years away from all those amazing things happening back then. Now, that's probably also going to sound insane, but I do not make these claims based on nothing. Everything I'm saying here is built off of science and real scholarship, objective scholarship. So I know I've been babbling here this whole time, so I'll, I'll, I'll shut it down, I'll stop talking. But what I suggest to you is to go start looking at dates that have that I or the J in documents, start looking at those dates. Okay, start learning about some of that stuff and make up your own mind, but look at the science behind it and go look at objective people. Do not only read mainstream history. I, don't do that. Or research. Don't just sit there and read what those guys say, you know, it's smudged pen marks or whatever. The next thing I would say is start to look at the evolution of human technology throughout the years. Right? Why, why do we have this thousand year gap to where basically historians are willing to say, and this is what historians say, this is not me. They say that basically human society pauses and literally picks up after a thousand years, right where it left off. And I mean right where it left off, down to the chemical fingerprint of what they use in construction material. The science proves this. The documentation proves this. The historical, real historical timeline proves this. So this series will continue. And I, I have a lot to show you guys. So I'll stop talking here because I've gone enough schizo babbling here. But don't forget, here's the takeaway. Here's the takeaway to slap you in the face a little bit and get you thinking. All right, the first thing and the number one thing is, is that your current society that you live in has absolutely been tainted by the existence of the Dark Ages. So if you are willing 
to continue to keep this lie going, you are only hurting yourself and those who you love and your community and the world. I, it, it, you, you know, that's what's happening. You are perpetuating a lie. The next thing is, is that we can also look at history in a more smooth evolutionary state. I don't mean evolution in the sense of, you know, monkeys to men. I mean, technological evolution, clothing evolution, writing evolution. Now, some migrations of humans will start to make sense once you get rid of the Dark Ages, etc., etc., right? Columbus, Rome, synonymous. They existed in the same period of time. This makes sense because we see Romans being painted exactly like Renaissance people, right? Now, suddenly, all of those paintings make sense. Okay, that's for another show as well. All right, so keep all this stuff in mind, and I will keep showing you all the information that unequivocally proves that the Dark Ages are absolute lies and garbage.